Calibration no longer required, and welcome once again to another episode of the final analysis of Volume 1, plus some songs. My name is Char Fox. Thank you so much for joining me. In the previous video of Part 1 of 2, we listened in to some of the songs that I was told were absolutely unacceptably replaceable and unavoidable that I needed to listen into. So I did, and now is the time for us to discuss everything in Volume 1, including the songs. So before I forget what I just saw, I'm still fresh. I just watched them like five minutes ago. Let's talk about the songs first, and then we'll, we'll try to throw away the linking lines throughout the whole series. Because a lot of things were clicking in my mind when I was listening into these lyrics. And let's take them in order. Let's take them in order. We'll try to make this all come back around full circle. We will. And we might definitely succeed. So here we go. The first song we listened to was This Will Be The Day, which is the opening song. However, if I remember correctly, it only played entirely in the first episode at the end because I remember there was a scene where Ospin and, and, and Glenda were on top of a, a ship and you just never saw that scene again and a couple of other things um, like when they're standing back to back in the uh, in like a, a circle formation and they have that black and red ball of energy above them um, if I remember correctly, there was a moment where Ruby actually tries to take a shot at it, but we don't see that in the short clip openings. So let's talk about let's talk about that 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 song first before I forget. Um, it's a heavy song. It's a heavy song that talks about how, from from what I was listening, um, the first the first verse is basically. Ruby being told or, or, or people thinking that she's she's just a child. She's young, she doesn't have the capacity or the capability or the skill set to be able to, to do something. But then the last verse says, surprise when a warrior will soon run wild. And um so you know, and <laughs> and it makes it, it makes me laugh because I always remember at the end of every opening Ruby spinning around the scythe and back then I used to say man she's so scary she's gonna mess somebody up with that scythe one day and then I watched the trailers and lo and behold there you go <laughs> I was I was a little bit flipped but R Ruby has the power Ruby has the capability it's just that maybe people look down on her because she's she's young from what I understand she's two years younger because she went to Beacon two years before and she left all her friends behind all right now um also something i mentioned before was the um, the lyrics that say i don't want to hear your absolution i hope you're ready for a revolution and also, welcome to a world of new solutions. Welcome to a world of bloody evolution, right? So, this part of the song kind of like focuses on the fact that, that there's changes happening. There are constant struggles taking place and, and the part that says, I don't want to hear your absolution, meaning... I don't want you, I don't want to hear you talk about how everything's going to be okay, how we're going to fix it, and, um, or how you have nothing to do with these things. Um, I just hope you're ready for a revolution. I hope you are ready to fight, because there's a fight coming. Welcome to a world of bloody evolution. So there's, there's a fight coming, and... 
I don't think we've seen it yet. I don't think we've, because I haven't gotten the indication that something big is happening except for <clears throat> maybe the end with uh, Roman and the uh, the White Fang and uh, the new character that showed up near the end. But something big is happening. Something big is going to take place, and. And it, it's it's coming, it's coming. Um, the song also. There was a part I'm trying to remember that says. Oh, this world is unforgiving. Even the brightest lights will cease to burn, meaning that. Exactly that. That, 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 that. This is a harsh reality that they live in. And if you think about it, like. Excuse me. If you think about it, like. There's. There's. Four. There's four, right? Yeah, in the last episode they were talking about it, and also in the uh, in the opening, there's there's four walled areas. I guess they call them kingdoms. There's four safe havens where humanity has taken shelter in, and anything anything about that, um, I'm guessing it's roaming with Grimm because based on the opening, um, when hum when when humanity came to life, you know they were oppressed by the creatures of Grimm. So there's four safe havens where humanity can be secure, and I'm guessing where we're at right now is one of them. We're still missing three. If there is four, I might be mistaken. <clears throat> I might be mistaken, but I think there's four. Because there was four castles, and when they were talking about the countries... I think I heard four different countries. So, but anyway, um, it says that uh, this world is unforgiving. Even the brilliant lights will cease to burn, meaning that it's a tough environment and it's really dangerous. And the brightest lights will cease to burn. Relentless, no matter who you are, there's no exceptions. Everybody's in the same boat. That's heavy. Um, this will be the day that we waited for. This will be the day that we open up the door. This world needs a great defender. This world's in the path of harm. No way. Something big is going to happen. This this song is speaking all sorts of warnings. And then in the end, victory is in a simple soul, you know. So. Oh, and, and in time your heart will open minds. Meaning that. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. It's. This song is about revolution and change and things happening and new solutions and somebody to take over and defend the world that we live in and the unforgiving planet and it's it's about changes. Something is about to change. Something is about to change. But anyway, let's uh let's move on to the next song. I 
I'm getting connections, but I'm not quite making them just yet. Let's move on to the next one. The next song is Red Like Roses from the Red Trailer. And I'm guessing that was the song that played when Ruby was in the Red Trailer, hence the name. But, you know. <laughs> in that song, it basically kind of like gives a small mention of all the characters for Team Ruby. Red Like Roses fills my dreams. Um... I forgot the rest of the lyrics. <laughs> uh, red like roses fill my dreams. And red like And brings me back to the place you rest. Yeah. Okay, so this... Because the trailer starts off with um, Ruby in front of the grave, I'm guessing she visits the grave whenever she feels lonely. Or whenever she starts remembering something. I'm not going to talk about it yet, but I, I want to talk about something about something else. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. And um, uh, so that's the intro for Ruby. And then it talks about the snow. Um, it goes. Ooh, ooh. It goes white. White is white is cold and always yearning. Burdened by a royal something. Burdened by a royal white is cold and always yearning. Burdened by a royal test. Okay, so. Do you remember when I was doing the white trailer analysis and I said that this person has these layers of defense and it's not because she's wearing a mask but because she has the weight of something that she has to meet up to and it goes into the detail of that she's burdened by this royal test. Now, what is the test and why is it royal? I'm not sure. I mean, she's, she's an heiress, not a princess. But then again, maybe, maybe where she comes from in the Snowflake Kingdom. The Schnee Company. Maybe the Schnee Company is like... No, I don't know. It's a corporation. But it's cold. And always yearning. Burdened by a royal test. That's... that's. I cannot describe Weiss better than those words right there. She is cold. In other words, she is... Emotionless in the part that she's disassociated. But she tried. She had her shining moments in which she kind of like... Okay, let's do this together. Okay, I'll stop being hard if you stop being childish. Okay, let's work together. You'll be the leader, and I'll be the best teammate you ever had. Okay, I don't care what happened in your past. Come talk to us, because we're a team now. And she's, she's growing. She has growth development going on. And that's fantastic. So... Even though it seems that she's cold, deep down, maybe that burden is, 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 is forcing her to take this role. But that's wise. Like, in a perfect nutshell, that's wise. And then um, it goes on to say, Burdened by a royal 
black the beast is black black the beast descends from shadows my toe might be wrong but black the beast descends from shadows now it's referring to to the Blake uh, character but by itself this song doesn't give me any much information other than she's coming from the shadows because she's undercover and she's keeping low but by itself this song doesn't give me much information to talk about Blake so I won't but there are other songs down the road that do so we'll come back to that in a little bit next up yellow uh, black the beasties black the beasties is from shadows yellow beauty burns gold yellow beauty burns gold yellow beauty burns gold it is absolutely important for you to listen to this song first because it is the it is the working link in the other song that I want to talk about later on but um but anyway that's the first song let's move on to the the second song let's move on to the excuse me to the third song and we have mirror mirror now mirror mirror is a uh, Weiss's song from the trailer as well and I, I mentioned in my previous video that it was a sad song because I'm not gonna talk too much about it I, I pretty much covered everything and because I heard it the first time but it talks about she is asking her reflection who's the loneliest of them all and, and, and she comes to the conclusion that she is because she has this this weight and this this royal test burden that is inhibiting her and, and, and it forces her to adopt this type of approach to life and it, it makes her push people away and she's alone and then it goes on to to, to her like asking herself like hey I mean um, it says save me from the things I see um, I can keep it all inside why don't you I can keep it all inside why don't you let me Man, it goes. Uh, what's behind you? Save me from the things I see. I can hide. Why won't you? Why won't you let me hide from me? There we go. So she's not happy with herself. In my opinion, she's not happy with herself. But it's it's what she has had to adopt to. To be able to carry out and, and 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 move along with 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 what she's trying to accomplish, and and mm, I don't know. I might be lacking information, but I'm not quite certain. Um, next up we have that was mirror mirror and then the next one we heard was gold let's talk about let me tell you something let me tell you something about gold this song if you were to listen to it and not know absolutely nothing about Ruby you would think it's a love song it's a song meant to like talking about um, um, like I'll turn your life to gold. Dream about anything you want. We'll make it happen. And um, you know, all you need is me. I'll be there for you. I'll protect you. I'll make sure nothing happens to you. And I'll keep you safe at night. You know. And 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 if you didn't know anything about Ruby, you would think that this song is about uh, a very loving, caring relationship. But 
Let me tell you something. If you remember, I mentioned in the first couple of episodes when they, when Ruby mentions that Blake, that not, she mentions to Blake that Yang used to read to her every night, and then I made the connection that, oh my gosh, she doesn't have her mom, because, you know, that's something that a mom would do, and then Yang had to step up and take that role as a mother towards Ruby and this song is basically I'm gonna say it I'm, I, I, I'm looking for an error but I can't find any this is a song that baby Yang used to sing to baby baby Ruby because it's just What I'm uncertain about, though, is that, especially now that I heard um, the next song, or the song after that, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and then we're gonna come back and revisit this song because I I I want to make sure I cover all the things. Next next song, this gold is a song about Yang comforting baby baby Ruby, baby Yang comforting baby baby Ruby. Now before I continue, let me see, gold, and then comes, I burn. Okay, I burn, I got two songs after that. I'm going to skip, forget it, this is my video, let's, let's, let's roll with me here. I'm going to skip, I burn, and I may fall, and I'm going to go straight to Red Like Roses Part 2. This is where I want to get at. Now in this song, at first I was like, what is going on? what is going on with like the song and the, the, the verses and what's being said and like three quarters of the way maybe halfway three quarters of the way it clicked it's a back and forth between Ruby and her mother if they had the opportunity to talk because they're both expressing their thoughts they're not directly addressing each other and then the mom comes in and she starts, um, how do you call it? She's uh, expressing to her daughter that, that, you know, I wish I could have been there, but it, it, it couldn't happen. I, 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 I left you there alone and, and, and jailed you in a prison of abandonment. And it's a back and forth between Ruby and Summer. That's her mom's name, right? Summer Rose. Ruby Rose, Summer Rose, the name on the grave. That's what I'm going with. Stick with me. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Summer Rose, Ruby Rose. Now, it's like a back and forth if they had an opportunity to talk, maybe. But the lyrics seem off in the aspect that when it starts, the, the dialogue and the verse that's going along, I'm guessing it's Ruby saying I, I couldn't stand another minute um, couldn't have you couldn't live my life without you in it um, all of the the joy that I had known was stripped away the moment that you died I might be butchering the lyrics but I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time <laughs> my temporary memory is not that large but I stuffed in nine songs, but I'm working with it, what I have. Now, she cusses, because uh, I, I remember distinctly she's saying every effing day. And so this is not child Ruby. This is maybe older Ruby. Now, what really concerns me, all right, it's a back and forth about how I missed you and, and how I'm... I'm here by myself and I'm upset about it and oh child I'm sorry I thought I was gonna be able to make it but I didn't and oh it's so hard without you and that you're all I ever want and then please don't lose your life don't throw your life away live on be strong and um, don't do what I did and and it just goes back and forth like that but what, what I want to get at is the final verse where it says it doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter now. The petals scattered now. Uh, doesn't matter now. 
Madness Cavern now. Every nightmare just was Every nightmare just discloses, and it's your blood that's red like roses. And this this is very critical and very important because it tells me that there is a 97% probability that Ruby witnessed Summer's demise. And the reason I say this is because it's all about the red like roses, red like roses, red like roses, and the petals scatter, and then this, and then that, and then, then it's it's constantly the petals, the petals, the petals, and then in this in this particular song, in the last verse, it doesn't matter now. The petals scatter now. Every nightmare just discloses. It's your blood that's red like roses. The only reason you would have a nightmare about blood being red like roses is if you just bleh, and your blood just goes pfft, and you have all these splat patterns that look like petals and in my opinion it is I'm absolutely certain that Ruby has witnessed the demise of her mother and it it traumatized her it just it shut her down just <clears throat> traumatic childhood experience scarred for life and then and then and then we have the song gold so let's talk about gold now in the song gold it is my opinion that yang is just being 100 and no, let's change that number. 200%. No, you know what? Let's go with uh, Nagima. Uh, I forgot what percentage they use, but the hearts are sparking now. A thousand percent. There we go. Da 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 da. Give it a thousand percent. Da, da, da. Sorry, off topic. <laughs> Their hearts are sparking. Yang is there for Ruby. Yang is there to reassure her, to nurture her, to care for her, to fix her wounds, her traumatic, um, her traumatic uh, emotional wounds that have scarred her because all she sees are petals, red like roses, and it was probably the destruction of summer just splattered all over maybe it wasn't the snow because oh my gosh I, I'm going off tangents here but maybe the first trailer is telling every is telling us everything we need to know it's not necessarily relating to the characters let me let me tell you something red like roses brings me back to the place you rest all right blood on the floor what floor white is cold and always yearning imagine a snowfield with snowflakes coming down all right uh, burdened by a royal test black the beast uh, Black this is Black the Beast. Black the Beast descends from shadows. That would be the creature that attacked Summer Rose. Alright? Now now Yellow Beauty burns gold. That is Yang. Stepping in, taking Ruby away from that atrocious scene, and bringing her back. Maybe there were other people in the area, maybe some other fighters, but it just so happens that Ruby witnessed the death of her mother.
and Yang pulled her away. And she says, I'll never let you... I'll never let you get hurt. I'll never leave you alone. I'll always care for you. Wish whatever you want and we'll make it come true. And then by the touch of my hand, I will make your life gold. Now, I was originally thinking that's Yang hugging Ruby with her fantastic, wonderful, beautiful hair that looks like gold. So that's all Ruby would see when she's hugging Yang. All she sees is gold. But the first song, it just, oh gosh, the first song just turned into a metaphor. It's possible that the first song is describing the murder, or not the murder, the, uh, the demise of Summer Rose. Not necessarily an introduction to the characters as I originally saw it. Because it just didn't add up. Why is Blake getting the short deal of this whole equation? Black the Beast descends from Shadow. Blake is not a beast doesn't make sense but this one this one does oh, this is crazy okay we we are on our quest and we're gonna get there all right so that's gold gold is yang just caring for ruby taking care of her what's the next song that i skipped i skipped i burn i burn is basically a description of yang and the kind of personality for at least from what i understood that she has um it takes no crap from nobody, and um, she even she, she even says I'm super Saiyan now. You know that's that's funny. That's cool. Uh, how does she know about Saiyans? Hey, maybe they have Dragon Ball C and Remnant. I don't know, <laughs> but it's funny and it's great. Um, so that's I Burn, and it's it's catchy. I would actually go running with that song. Every time she says I Burn, can't hold me down. I'll speed up my my tempo <laughs> but I don't have much for I burn it's just a description and the personality and the power that is harnessed inside Yang uh, <laughs> let's go for the next song I may fall that song is it has a sequence to it and I loved it it was great um, it goes on saying, uh, I forgot how it starts. It goes off saying, uh, um, there's there. Uh, I forgot. Come on, come on. Help won't arrive. I know that's how the first verse ends. Um, there's. I'm confusing it with the final verse that says there's a moment that changes a lifetime, but it's not that one. It's. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There's a day when our hearts will be broken and the darkness will cast out the light. And our eyes will cry a million tears. Help won't arrive. Yeah, anyway. This song is basically starting off with despair. Total despair. Like, you have reached the end of the line, and there is nothing else to help you. You are on your own. And then that part that says, our, 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 our eyes cry a million tears. Help won't arrive. You know, like you're on your own it's very it's very uh, the word I'm looking for is uh, it, 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 it drives you uh, what's the word I'm looking for gosh despair it's despair but I'm looking for another word um, I can't remember I'm sorry 
but it puts you in a state of despair. It puts you in a state of of this is it. It's over. There's 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 no turning back. There's no there's no salvation. There's no way out of this. And then it just keeps on going. Um, there's there's a day where our courage collapses. There's a day where courage collapses. When no, not when. There's a day where our courage collapses. And our friends. And our friends suddenly leave us behind. Um. Can't remember that one. Sorry, uh, I took too long. <laughs> I'm forgetting a couple of items. But um, it's it's the message behind it is just despair. But then, the chorus is, in spite of all these things, I may fall because it's too much for me to handle. I may fall, but not like this. And that is so awesome. Like it's so cool the way they organize that because you put all these opposition factors in front of you and you're like I may fall but not like this it won't be by your hand that's cool I appreciate that um, and then in the end at the final verse when it slows down and it's just the vocals it says there's a moment that changes a lifetime wait we do um, it's a moment that changes a lifetime. No, there's a moment that changes a life when you do something that no one else can. Um, oh, the lyrics are breaking. that changes a lifetime do something no one else can and something decisions will take us one final stand um, there's a moment changes a lifetime when you choose not to cower or crash on the ground um, the moment when we stand with friends our courage found <laughs> kind of but um Despite all the overwhelming odds, you stand against him, and you fight with everything you've got. This is a song of not giving up. This is a song of committing to the very last ounce of your strength until you can no longer lift up your weapon or, or anything that you need to use to defend yourself and stand against the opposition. Stand against it, and you'll come out victorious. You may fall, but not like this. You'll come out victorious. And it reminds me of uh, the SAS saying, he who dares wins. This is it right here. You know, uh, against all these overwhelming and abundant odds against you, you stand up and you fight and you will, you will thrive and you will survive and you will pull through it. And this is a great song. It has a nice ring to it. Uh, but um, so let's continue. I may fall. Red Like Roses Part 2, we already talked about it. And. From from Shadows, the full version, because there's a, there's a From Shadows, that's the black trailer. From Shadows plays the short version in the trailer. Now in this song, it talks about the oppression that the Faunas were facing the entire time. And it's really heavy in the aspect that they have been severely discriminated against. And I just don't know the reason why. They're extremely cute. They are. I mean, Bunny Girl, even Blake, when he takes off her bow, the moment that I paused it, the, the face that she has, she looks so adorable. She's like lost. Just, they're cute. Fauna's are cute. Um, 
girl faunas are cute. Monkey boy, he's just a guy. <laughs> but son, <laughs> but he has cool nunchucks, gunchucks as some of you call them. Um, but why were the fauna suppressed so much? Why was the conflict? I still don't know. But apparently, new faunas that are born into this world, they are exposed to a lot of oppression, a lot of um, hate and discrimination. And the song basically talks about them uprising from the shadows. And And I'm guessing that's why I was playing in the black trailer, because they were doing their little terrorist activities against the Schnee co co Corporation. But... It has a heavy meaning to it. And it's, it's, it's a little bit sad when they talk about... Um, stupid, worthless, mud, violent, pure evil, all the description that they used to describe or how humans describe the fauness, it's 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 pretty messed up. It is pretty messed up. And the words of uh, Professor Ublik, um, what was that he said? Has anybody been discriminated against because of the fauna heritage? And then the people raised their hand. That is terrible. That is absolutely terrible. There was a word he used. I can't remember what it was, but that's what it is. It's it's atrocious. That's the things that lead to violence. How right he is. Next up, we have Wings. Wings. Which one was Wings? Oh, the ending song. Okay. Wings. There's there's this one part in the song that says. Um, I forgot what it was. It was, I think it was 12, twelve hours, twelve hours is a long night. Yeah, twelve hours. Now this this song makes me think that just just because of that verse, the entire the rest of the song is just talking about don't be disappointed, don't let your heart be broken, you know, don't let yourself get down, and it's hard to find when you're always being oppressed by these things that keep coming back at you. I believe this is a song that Blake indirectly is kind of like singing to uh to Weiss because as a way of no. No, because it says that hang in there, your wings will soon fly. Okay, it's a song that's directed to Blake, and it involves Wise because. How about this? Here, we're we're getting there. It's a song that involves Wise and Blake, since they're white and black, and they are kind of like involved with each other. She being part of the Schnee she being part of the white fang and they're like you know involved in the yin and the yang you know the the, the circle of the chinese bat symbol of balance now um and the parts that she says patience is hard to find that's probably for wise as well as 12 hours is a, is a long night because she was searching. Do, do you know how long I was searching for you? Twelve hours. That's that's wise. And in those twelve hours, I had a lot of time to think. I don't care. <laughs> that's wise. And that part of the song is directed towards her because she wasn't fully grasping, but she had a lot of time to run it through her mind back and forth and process all the information. And then on the other hand, you have Blake um, with broken wings, 
unable to fly, but don't worry, it's not going to hold you down. In other words, her past, her terrorist white fang past, is her broken wings, is the dark history that she's carrying with her. It's what made her run away, it's what made her flee from her team. And now, the song is a way to kind of like address these things to her and allow her to move past this and grow from this and just move on with her life. It's it's not – broken wings is not enough to hold you down is what the song says. And I think it's great. It's nice. It's it's really well made. All of these songs, you know, if you hear it on the radio, you're like, oh, that sounds like a cool song. But the meaning behind it is – it's really something else. Um, how long have I been talking for? Jesus! 46 minutes in... Now, 46 minutes. <laughs> I gotta stop soon, because this is ridiculous. I was thinking this is gonna take me maybe 20, 30 minutes. But clearly that's not the case. Um, to bring the whole thing full circle, we're there. We have a lot of things to work with, and apparently there's an activity coming up, the uh, a tournament that's coming up where uh, the kingdoms, the four kingdoms are coming over, and the new character in the end showed up, and she has pawns, according to Ruby's uncle grow because oh, that's my uncle you know um, if it's the same guy because if it isn't then it's like whoops <laughs> nothing to do with it but what were some of the things I forgot to mention I can't think of anything right now, but Volume 1 is officially over. I have listened to and talked about the nine absolutely no excuse, you must hear songs, and I believe we have cleared all the requirements to move on to Volume 2, so... can't I can't think of anything else I'm trying really hard to try to remember if I have forgotten something and I'm out that's it 48 minutes <laughs> anyway thank you thank you so much for discussing volume one with me or discuss along <laughs> it's gonna be my thing alongs discuss along with Char Fox where we talk about the ending of Volume 1 and Volume 1 as a whole and season and the songs that were involved in Volume 1. And we have done just that and we are ready now to proceed to Volume 2. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for joining me in another Discuss Along and pre get ready as we make way to volume two in the next video. Wasn't this so much better than having like six different videos that you have to like listen to a song, three songs, and then another video with three comments, and then another video with three songs, and then three comments, three songs, three comments. And it's like just put it all together and make two different videos, and that's it. Okay, fine. Gosh, it sounds good. I'll do it. So here we are, and we have just finished. I'm rambling. I'll stop. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.